So Microsoft has recently announced the Copilot Plus PC. So that's a range of PCs that have new hardware and software to integrate advanced machine learning techniques, AI as we're now calling it, into the operating system right up through to the user experience. And these Copilot Plus PCs have a new piece of technology called an NPU, a neural processing unit, which of course we've seen previously in smartphones and in tablets on Android, Apple, and so on, but now they're coming to PCs. So the question for today's video is, what does the NPU do? Is it optional? Is it mandatory? Is it really the best way to go forward? What about the CPU? What about the GPU? Can they not do AI tasks? We're going to look at all of it and see what conclusions we come to. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the question before us is, do you need a neural processing unit, an NPU? Microsoft says yes. Yes, you definitely do but there are others that disagree. So we've now been introduced to the world of Copilot Plus PCs. Microsoft has introduced us to this new revolution, they're calling it, of uh, the PC, and they feature, in quotes, the most advanced AI models. And from some of the stuff that Microsoft has been showing, you've got PC recall, you've got the ability to generate and refine AI images in near real time directly on the display. You've got live captioning, translation of audio from 40 different languages into English and so on. So things that generally we have already seen using machine learning, uh, but specifically applied to Windows and the world of Copilot Plus PCs. Now, Microsoft telling us this is all thanks to the NPU, to the neural processing unit, and they're introducing an all new system architecture to bring the power of the CPU, the GPU, and the MPU together. And a Copilot Plus PC must feature a CPU, a GPU, and an NPU. And we'll go more to that in a moment. And it also says, and this is a quote directly from Microsoft, connect to and enhance by large language models running in our cloud in concert with small language models running locally. And they're up to 100 times more efficient for running AI workloads. And that by that, Microsoft mean the NPU set up on a Copilot Plus PC. Let's look at those last two statements. They're connected to LMMs in the cloud, connected to and enhanced by large language models running in the cloud and small language models running locally. So just to clarify, Copilot Plus PCs don't run an LLM on the scale, size and performance of ChatGPT locally on the NPU. So the NPU isn't a magic way of getting ChatGPT on your laptop. No, instead, they still connect to the cloud for that. And uh, the NPU doesn't bring ChatGPT to the PC without the cloud. However, it does allow you to run smaller language models. Um, and they're claiming that to do these smaller language models running locally, and there'll be other things like that image generation that we talked about, image refinement running locally, it's 100 times more efficient. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the information in small writing, they say tested in April 2024, well, that's fairly recently, using the Phi, I'm assuming that's Phi 2, but it doesn't specify that, small language uh, model workload running 512 token prompt processing in a loop. So they're basically running a benchmark here, running it round and round and round with default settings, comparing Pilot Plus PCs with Snapdragon processors, comparing them to Windows 11 PCs with NVIDIA 4080 GPU configurations. Now, here's the thing to note. An NVIDIA 4080 has an average power draw of 246 watts while playing 3D games and a maximum total power draw of 251 watts. Now, I don't think it's drawing that when it's doing uh, machine learning. However, at those kind of numbers, I really would hope that a Copilot Plus laptop is more efficient because they've basically stuck a really beefy big graphics card in there and they've used uh, their uh, models a CUDA build of it notes there a CUDA build of it running on the GPU and it says hey if we run this on an MPU then it's more efficient than running it on your 250 watt GPU well yeah I hope so so let's just talk about 
machine learning for a second. If you're familiar with this, then just skip ahead a, a couple of minutes. But basically, machine learning has two distinct phases, what's called training and inference. The training phase requires massive amounts of compute, time and money. So, for example, these were some numbers that were knocking about when GPT-3 was trained. And, of course, we've gone a long way since then. So at least $4.6 million to train GPT-3. 355 years of training if you ran it on just one GPU. Or if you ran it on 355 GPUs, it would take a year. Of course, they did it on even more than that. And they estimated that it consumed 1,287 megawatt hours of energy to train GPT-3. So this is basically where they suck in the entire internet and they train the model with it. That is a big, big expensive process. However, there's a second stage which is called inference. And this is when you take the trained model and you can question it, you can query it, okay? And then it gives you back an answer. And with a large language model, that basically means you give it the tokens, the question, you know, five exciting things to do in uh, Paris. And then it will give you the list because it goes into the, the network and then out comes the, the results. That requires much less compute. Of course, you've got thousands of people, even more, using ChatGPT and other uh, LLMs simultaneously. And they're running them on these servers, but they're nowhere near as big as the servers for the training. Uh, mainly it's memory bound because these models are huge. Now, for example, you can run a quantitized version. It's a shrunk down version in eight gigs of RAM. So that's just one model running in eight gigs of RAM. So imagine the full size one. It's absolutely massive. And uh, SLM small language models are based on the same idea, but they are much more. So Phi Mini 3 is a 3 billion parameter SLM that uses just 2.4 gigabytes of RAM. So you can see you don't need as much compute for doing inference. And then if you bring it down to what they're actually doing on your laptop, that's image generation and small language models, then that's very different to what they're running up in their cloud offerings. So what hardware do you need to do training and inference? Well, as I said, for training, you need lots of big servers with lots of GPUs. They generally tend to be NVIDIA GPUs, lots of RAM and lots of storage. Now, inference is very different. Inference can be run on a CPU, a GPU or an NPU. Videos here on this channel that I've got show running large language models on a Raspberry Pi, so that's CPU only. And inference of simple machine learning models, so not language models, but for example, models that can detect certain types of movement that can detect whether you've, you know, swung uh, a, a wand in a, in a certain way. So you can, you know, you can have a game or or, something else, or tracking what an, or, you know, a package has gone, where, where it's been bounced, where it's been dropped, where it's been kicked and all that kind of stuff. You can run those even on a microcontroller. So, and I've got uh, videos about that here on this channel. So you can do simple machine learning even on microcontrollers. Now, where the inference occurs makes zero difference to its functionality. I really, really want to emphasize this. The process that you go through is exactly the same. The results that come out are exactly the same. So it doesn't matter whether you run it on the CPU, the GPU or the NPU. The result will be exactly the same. There's no functional difference about where you run these models where you do the inference for these models then you say gary why do you need then npus if you can run it on the cpu if you can run it on the gpu what is all this talk about npus well that's really the question of of this video so while functionality is the same across cpu gpu and npu the potential potential advantage of npus is speed and efficiency that's the message that microsoft and Qualcomm are trying to say. So Microsoft is claiming an NPU is necessary for both speed and efficiency. All Copilot Plus PCs need an NPU. You can't have a Copilot Plus PC that doesn't have some kind of NPU. Now, AMD and Intel are both working on processors that will have NPUs inside of them. I think AMD have just made some announcements about that as well. So they are coming along into the same space that Qualcomm are currently in and they're bringing their general CPU and GPU and then adding an NPU into it as well. So they qualify for running Copilot Plus 
PCs. Now we've heard up until now that GPUs are very good at machine learning and they are. They're very good at machine learning for training and they're also good at doing inference. Now in a recent media briefing, an NVIDIA representative acknowledged that Copilot Plus features won't run on a GeForce GPU, it will only run on MPUs that meet Microsoft's specifications. We know this, this is not news, but this is coming from a big industry player. This is what they said, with respect to the Copilot Plus features, you kind of want those running on an NPU. A GPU would be capable of doing it, but you kind of want them running on an MPU because you hear Microsoft talking about Copilot Plus as a bunch of always on models. That's the laptops. And for battery life, you want those things running on these lightweight, power efficient platforms. In other words, the NPU. So that's the that's the marketing line. That's the NVIDIA who are obviously working with Microsoft. Uh, they, uh, you know, for all kinds of things. I mean, they're big partners. That That is the party line. That is what they're saying. However, when pushed, the same person said this. As of today, RTX GPUs can't run local sessions of Copilot Plus. Ultimately, this is a Microsoft decision for where the AIs run. Like I mentioned, GPUs have the technical capability to run it, but Microsoft is running these on the MPUs. And this is something he reiterated to another journalist question inside that same media briefing. Now, there's an article covering more about that briefing on the Android Authority website. I'll leave a link to it in the description. So what about CPUs? So we know that GPUs can do it. We know that GPUs could even be actually Copilot Plus PCs if Microsoft uh, allowed it. Well, if we remember the M4 launched quite recently, I've got a video about it here on this channel. And if you notice there, it says next gen ML accelerators. So CPUs can also run AI inference tasks. Of course they can, as I've said, the functionality of inference is the same whether you run on a CPU, GPU or an MPU. And you've got these ML accelerators in the M4 and these are based on ARM's scalable matrix extensions. That's an extension available in the ARM V9 architecture. So the point is, is that when you're doing uh, neural networks, when you're doing things like large language models, one part of it is being able to do matrix multiplications. And there are now these scalable matrix operations that can occur in the CPU. This is not part of any neural engine or any part of any, this is actually part of the CPU and the M4 has that in it. And another example, LM code optimized to use ARM's hardware matrix instructions. This is not the SME ones, but they have some more general purpose matrix multiplication and matrix multiply and accumulate instructions can see a 3x improvement in performance. So here we can see them compared against uh, uh, an Intel and an AMD server processor. This is an, uh, a Graviton 3 ARM based processor, which has these matrix multiplication functionality in them. And you can see up to a three times performance improvement because once you start to do these fancy mathematical things that you need for um, machine learning, once you can start to do them in the CPU, well, then it's just going to do the same thing as what an MPU does, but now you're just doing it in the CPU and it's just manipulating these matrices and doing the multiplications. And in fact, when uh, ARM recently announced the Cortex X925 and so on, again, I've got videos about the here on my channel. One of the things they were emphasizing is that they have an over 40% increase in performance for the Cortex 925 when running uh, large language models. Again, because they know that this is a use case that needs to happen and it can happen on the CPU. So this is a 42%, 46% improvement compared to the Cortex X4. So, e so ARM are paving the way, whether on the server, whether at the client side, you can do a lot of this inference stuff on the CPU. So what does all that mean? I've covered all the different aspects of what does that mean? Well, first of all, we have to take this way. Machine learning can run anywhere. Okay, that's just a fact. You can do it on a microcontroller, you can do it in the server, you can do it everything in between. Okay, there are just uh, different ways of doing it. And Microsoft has gone down the path of saying you need an NPU for the Copilot Plus PCs and their rationale is speed and efficiency. Now, here's the point. That rationale might be right. That rationale might be correct, but it needs to be proved. At the moment, we're just taking Microsoft's word for it. And NVIDIA are saying, well, actually, you could run it on our GPU. Now, imagine if you've got a Copilot Plus desktop unit with a dedicated 
GPU in it. Why can't you run it on that GPU? Because uh, it's plugged into the mains. What? What? Why won't Microsoft let you do that? And not only that, um, you can run it on the CPU, as I've shown. Even Apple have got specific stuff, accelerators in the CPU, not in the processor, in the CPU itself for matrix multiplication, so that you can do this kind of stuff on the CPU, not necessarily. Now, the downside is that we will never probably get to prove this rationale. We're being told this by Microsoft. It might be right. It might not be right, but we can't prove it. Why can't we prove it? Well, the first is because we can't test Copilot Plus PCs without an NPU because they don't exist. So whatever happens, it's going to have an NPU and whatever Microsoft, uh, the builds they make of Windows 11 and so on, they're going to use the NPU. So we're never going to get an even look at one or the other. And the second thing is hard to create equivalent tests across CPU, GPU and NPU, mainly because the NPU is a closed thing. Generally, NPUs, because you can imagine now, NPU is going to come from Qualcomm now. You're going to get an NPU from AMD. You're going to get an NPU from Intel. So we've already got three NPUs here, and they're not going to have a common interface. They're not going to have a common low-level interface, for sure. They may have a common higher-level interface where you can just say, run this image generation model. But can you put your own bespoke models on there? Can you test it with your own model and say, let's see which one runs faster? I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that we're going to get that lower level of access. So we're going to get a high level of access, which is kind of got a gatekeeper on it. It's only going to allow you to run. It's going to be a walled garden kind of thing, only going to allow you to run certain things on it. So to test this hypothesis that actually you need an MPU for speed and efficiency is going to be really hard to prove. Now, the downside of that is it could mean that there's a whole area that we could be using uh, AI in that is going to be closed off because we're not allowed to run it that way. We're not allowed to run it on the GPU. We're not allowed to run it on the CPU. We have to run it on the NPU. Now, of course, this only applies to Windows. We've seen that Apple have got their M4. And so I'm assuming that coming up soon, we're going to see announcements from Apple with MacBooks with the M4. We're going to see some AI news from Apple where some of this stuff is going to be running on the CPU. And of course, if we're running an operating system like Linux, we could try to test out the performance of these things in a more less of a wall, less of a controlled environment. But that's going to take some effort and some work by lots of different people. And we'll see over time whether we can kind of collate the results. But for the moment, this is what Microsoft is saying. And we've got little choice but to accept it. Now, as a closing thought, I would love to test this stuff. I would love to prove this right or wrong. So if anyone from Microsoft is listening. If anyone from Qualcomm is listening, if anyone from NVIDIA is listening, I would love to find ways to test these theories to see what is the speed and the power efficiency across the CPU, the GPU and the NPU, not only for tailored first party models that, you know, Qualcomm have made or Microsoft have made, but for any model that we want to run, including things like Llama 3 and Fire 3 and so on that are available open source. So if anyone's out there listening to me and they want to prove their point, I'm here, I'm available, I'm willing and ready to do this testing. Okay, so there you have it, the uh, NPU and the new Copilot Plus uh, PCs. Love to hear your thoughts on this subject. Do you think that it's the right direction to take? Do you think they are more power efficient and do they increase the speed? Or would you prefer it to happen on the GPU or the CPU, which of course is ubiquitous, so it will work on any platform if we concentrate on doing it on the CPU. Love to hear your thoughts. Really interested to see what people think about this new direction that we are heading. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, why not stick around? Subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>